As a high-ranking politician, you live dangerously. You always have to worry about being attacked by hostile states, political opponents, and angry citizens. Since Olaf Scholz became the Chancellor of Germany, the security measures for him have been ramped up. In this video, we show you what his personal protection looks like, how he is protected in traffic and in the air, and how safe his residence is. You can expect some curious details that you definitely wouldn't believe. So stay tuned here at Wonderlane. First, let's take a look at Olaf Scholl's personal protection. The politician is protected around the clock by several federal police officers who are not only armed, but also have extensive special training as bodyguards. The tactics that the BKA officers have mastered are more than spectacular. For example, they are trained to detect all suspicious activities and people in the vicinity at lightning speed and react accordingly. They can take down attackers by both force of arms and hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques, and are not afraid to jump into the trajectory of a bullet to protect the Chancellor in an emergency. In fact, they are even prepared for emergencies, and, as with the Secret Service, BKA officers are also advised to sacrifice themselves for gunfire attacks. But this is not a duty. However, the BKA officers are also prepared at all times for other threats, such as knife attacks, bombings, or other attacks. Olaf Scholl's personal protection group is always close to him and usually forms a so-called diamond cross. This means that the bodyguards run around the politician in a checkered formation and can therefore protect him at all times against attacks from all sides. Parts of the team always behave so inconspicuously that they cannot be recognized as bodyguards by outsiders. At public appearances, they are also supported by snipers and, more recently, even by drone pilots who observe the situation from above, for example, from the roofs of buildings, so that they can intervene in an emergency. In addition to the bodyguards, who are more or less visible in the vicinity of the Chancellor, there is also a team in the background which always analyzes all situations and possible dangers. So no matter where Olaf Scholz goes, his protection team has already been there and carefully analyzed what dangers might be lurking here for the Chancellor. For security reasons, the government is naturally keeping secret exactly how many people make up the personal protection team and what the individual tasks of the team members look like. Rumor has it that there are even individual bodyguards who carry small explosive devices or nanobombs with them in case of emergency. This has not been confirmed, but abroad, for example, at the Israeli Secret Service Mossad, such a technique has been used for decades. In the US, mini bombs have also been available for some time, which can be carried inconspicuously by special units such as the Navy SEALs. Now let's move on to the new Chancellor's transportation and the question of how Olaf Scholz is actually protected in ordinary road traffic. Olaf Scholz is not traveling in a normal car. Instead, he has a very special vehicle with a driver at his disposal. This is the Mercedes-Benz S680 Guard Limousine worth over half a million euros, which is always preceded and followed by a convoy of escort vehicles on all trips. The Mercedes was custom built for the Chancellor, and although it looks rather inconspicuous on on the outside and can hardly be distinguished from other high quality cars of the manufacturer, it has it all. Now we come to the features of the already without passengers 4.2 ton heavy vehicle. If you're expecting a lot of technical gadgets like in a James Bond movie, you'll be disappointed at first. In fact, the Chancellor's limousine has been deliberately designed without unnecessary electronics to make hacker attacks more difficult. Instead, the Mercedes-Benz S680 Guard 4MATIC is a protective cage on wheels. The vehicle's windows not only protect against pistol shots and explosions, but also against machine guns and special military ammunition that flies twice as fast as conventional ammo. So Scholz is safe in his car even when he's traveling in civil war countries or is attacked by armed drones. The Mercedes windshield alone weighs an incredible 400 kilograms. Of course, it's not just the windows made of 10 layer special glass that ensure safety in the Chancellor's limousine. In fact, the vehicle even meets the highest possible protection class, VR10. This means that for the first time, the Mercedes was built in entirely with a specially armored base frame. The armor is 20 centimeters thick and is secured in a similar way to a real tank. Despite its weight, the sedan can still drive up to 190 kilometers per hour. Even the tires of the vehicle are equipped in such a way that the car can't even get a flat, even if it's under fire. In addition, the Mercedes has an automatic fire extinguishing system, an emergency system for poison gas attacks, and a hydraulic system that allows the vehicle to function without any electronics. Now that you know what kind of personal protection Olaf Scholz has and how safe he is on the road, we come to the question of how the Chancellor is actually protected when he is up 
up in the air. The Chancellor does not fly in normal airplanes like normal citizens, but is on the move with the government plane Conrad Adenauer, an Airbus that is the equivalent of the US presidential aircraft Air Force One. The Conrad Adenauer holds up to 143 passengers and can fly 13,000 kilometers non-stop at a stretch. In the event of an emergency with casualties, the interior of the aircraft can be converted into a flying intensive care unit at any time. To prevent such emergencies from occurring in the first place, the Conrad Adenauer is equipped with an extensive safety system. On the one hand, the aircraft is monitored by radar from the ground. Additionally, jets of the German armed forces are available as escorts to protect the government aircraft in the air. Particularly spectacular is the laser-based defense system on board which automatically detects infrared guided missiles just like in the Hollywood movies. This technology was specially installed in the US by a defense contractor and is known to work particularly reliably. The Chancellor can comfortably take his armored limousine and even the accompanying vehicles with him in the cargo hold on air travels and thus does not have to resort to foreign cars abroad, which could harbor dangers. Last but not least, we would like to show you how Olaf Scholz is protected at his residence. The Chancellor lives, although he would be entitled to it, not in the Chancellor's office, but in an apartment in a prime location in the Berlin suburb of Potsdam. More precisely, Olaf Scholz has been living here with his wife since last year in a Renaissance-style palazzo in the neighborhood of the Museum of Barberini. The building was newly constructed in 2016, and the first floor houses an art gallery. The apartment also includes a backyard and an underground garage. Of course, Olaf Scholz's apartment is protected on the one hand by an alarm system and a security system, but the other protective measures are so fierce that Olaf Scholz is not only in trouble with his neighbors, but even with the justice system. The backyard is permanently illuminated at night by a bright spotlight, and two armed police officers stand guard here to check that no unauthorized persons gain access via the backyard. The armored limousines are also parked in the underground garage, and here security guards are also watching to make sure nothing happens, of course. It is officially known that the highest security level is in place to guard Olaf Scholz's residence. The fact that Olaf Scholz and his wife moved into the apartment in the Palazzo was kept a secret even from the neighbors, and this fact, then, promptly caused trouble. They understood that the politician had to be protected, but they were very upset that they were suddenly controlled by armed security guards in the backyard when they took out the garbage. Also, the blocking of the underground car park, as well as the bright light at night, caused so much anger among the tenants that they tried to take legal action against it. But the police finally explained that the interests of the owner's community must take a backseat to higher value legal interests, such as the protection of the chancellor, and allow necessary protective measures. Well, well, that's it for this video. Let us know in the comments if you think all the protective measures are justified or overdone. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to Wonderlane for more interesting content every week, and we will see you next time here at Wonderlane.